Hello, it is Wednesday, November 10th, 2021. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to my New York Times crossword daily solve. It's actually sort of astonishing to me looking in the, I'm trying to see my video preview here, and it doesn't look like you can see very much evidence of the complete disaster that is this room. At the moment, I've, as I think I mentioned the other day, I'm moving, we're moving into a new flat, and it is a, it is a, it's a mess. (laughs) I'll say that. This room is uh, sort of a staging ground for quite a few boxes, but it doesn't look like any of that is evident in the video. So, great. Lucky you. Um, Anyway, it's a Wednesday puzzle, so we're midway through the work week, at least, and we'll be getting a maybe bit more challenge than we've had Monday, Tuesday, I can hope. Well, I can assume. Maybe I should be careful what I what I wish for, what I hope for in this case. Um, but first, let's discuss some clues from yesterday's puzzle. Kathy Swope explains that The singer Gabriela Sarmiento Wilson began her career under her own name in 2016. I'm sorry, began her career under her own name, but in 2016 began performing as her, and I suppose it's H-E-R, so it's an acronym. And um, that was a, uh, her was an answer in yesterday's puzzle, some fill in yesterday's puzzle, and I was not familiar with that that performer. Uh, And what else do we have? Sorry, I should have been better organized here. Um, Kathleen Quinn observes that the cross of Eli Manning with O-line is even more clever when you consider that Eli was quarterback for the New York Giants and thus protected by the New York Giants offensive line during his career. So there we go. And Jacob Raybould corrects my hazy recollection of a Shirley Temple, my hazy and incorrect recollection of a Shirley Temple, the mocktail. He explains it's a drink made from grenadine, a re- which a, a reddish syrup. Yes, grenadine is a, a um, sort of sickly sweet, almost uh, red syrup, and some sort of lemon-lime soda. And Gemini Mish responds to say, yes, the mocktail with cola and grenadine, which I think is what I was thinking of, is a Roy Rogers, whereas Shirley Temples are usually with Sprite or 7-Up. And then Jacob also points out that AOL, Google, and Yahoo are all email providers. So fair enough. They all Those three companies came up in the puzzle yesterday as having something in common, and I wasn't quite sure what it is, even though obviously they have plenty of overlap. And in the email providers is a pretty safe guess, I think. And let's see. Finally, we have uh, Shama Bowl caught me out on a bit of a slip of the tongue that I went with completely without notice on my part. Uh, she says, I would hope the ASPCA isn't for the protection of cruelty to animals. I, uh, yes, I, I think I called the ASPCA the American Society for the Protection of Cruelty to Animals rather than Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, which would be a pretty distressing association, I would say. Okay, um, a couple quick things to mention. I will say there's the new Twitter account at The Daily Sol. Follow that for tweets about the content on this channel and the Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash the daily solve, where you can get bonus videos and other benefits. Check it out over there. And finally, there's the Discord chat server where you can chat with other folks about these crosswords, these videos, other crosswords, other puzzles, whatever you like. Well, not whatever you like, but (laughs) things inside that sphere, Uh, whatever you like in that puzzling context. Okay, so let's move on to today's crossword. This is a Wednesday puzzle constructed, as I said, no, I didn't say, by Max Chen Loring and Benjamin Chen Loring. I didn't say their names before, but what I did do is I looked them up because I was curious about their shared surnames. And because there are two names given, I thought, well, they could be partners, but obviously they could also be brothers. Um, And it turns out they're brothers. I usually don't read the construction notes before solving a puzzle because often it can give clues about the puzzle. And so I I did my best, and I think I succeeded, in just sort of skimming for some information about these constructors because I was I was just curious about their relationship to one another. And they are brothers. I think one of them is in university and one of them is in high school possibly. Um so that's that's pretty fun. That's a nice that's a nice thing. Um I don't know if they've constructed puzzles for the New York Times before. I didn't I didn't read far enough to to get that out of fear of spoilers. Anyway, let's get started. 
it shouldn't be material to the solve, so we'll just get going. Reading of Stacks Records. Otis Redding, I would think. A great singer. Lotion Letters. This has come up a few times recently. SPF, Sun Protection Factor. And a Nordic capital could be Oslo. A Marvel movie directed by Kenneth Branagh. Kenneth Branagh directed the first Thor film, I guess. And Johnny Carson's Home State. This isn't knowledge I would have, but in four letters starting with I, my guess would be Iowa. Let's see if that fits. Singer Rita, Rita Ora. Yes, I recognize that name. 56 across to a dairy farmer. I wonder if this is part of a theme. Who knows? 56 across to a dairy farmer. And 56 across, ah, a small amount. A small amount. Loaf, I wonder, low-fat milk maybe this could be? A small amount to a dairy farmer? Um, what's this? One who's got the goods. A shopkeeper, maybe? Does that work with the crosses? Yes. Genesis Craft would be in the Ark, Noah's Ark. Motivational Speaker Robbins. Oh, who is that guy? Um, Tony Robbins, right? Is there, there must be, there must be either there's a different Robbins or this is a Rebus. Shopkeeper does fit pretty cleanly. Mockery of a sort. Apism or aping? You're mocking somebody, mockery, apery maybe. Although I would be sort of surprised if that ery ending were repeated, not because that never happens, but just because it's such a high percentage of this word to be given it in the clue. I'm not really sure. Let's let's look around. It often surrounds high maintenance people. It often surrounds high maintenance people. I don't know. Something of sort of an air of pretension, or I'm not really sure. Hold up, deter, or delay, none of those fit. Yeezus Raptor is Kanye, Kanye West. So, apery is probably wrong, maybe aping, but this K here does make this look like low-fat milk. So does that help Mel Robbins, motivational speaker Mel Robbins? I just don't know. Order back. Remand, perhaps? Not very confident about that in this case. Side, well, side with tandoori chicken, so that's an Indian dish, could be naan, the bread. And hold up, de oh, detain. Yes, if you hold somebody up, you are detaining them. Oh, and drama often surrounds high maintenance people. Here we go. So I suppose there is a motivational speaker, Mel Robbins. I don't know that person. And then mockery of a sort does look like aping. So imitating, aping, often is, often is intended as mockery. 56, oh, here we go. 56 across to a smartphone user. So yes, this 56 across is indeed a, um, our theme. It's sort of not really our revealer, even though it's in the position the revealer often occupies, but is the central theme answer. It's the it's the answer around which the other theme answers hinge. And so these are all a small amount, whatever that is, to various people, to a dairy farmer, to a smartphone user, and so on. I wonder if this could be a dying battery, perhaps, to a smartphone user. I mean, something small. Yeah. Cartoon character who says, swiper, no swiping. Um, in four letters, starting with a D, I'm guessing Dora the Explorer for a popular children's character. And on and on and on, could be to no end or at no end. Could be either of those, I think. Blank said, oh wait, sorry, no end, not to end, sorry. The two might be at the beginning. Um, because this would be enough said, um, idiomatic or sort of colloquial enough said. And then blank hand. Sure. Here we have another one of these theme clues, 56 across to a gambler. Don't know. And then here we have Battle of Britain group, the Royal Air Force, I would think, the RAF. And actress Chaplin is Una Chaplin. Comes up not infrequently in the crossword. Oh, oh, sorry. I was looking at the wrong selected. I was thinking, uh, never mind. 
Anyway, 56 across to a gambler, right? We did already see that. So let's check some more crosses here. Oh, actually, we can fill in this no end, which would be to no end. And then, oh, here we have another connection. Day of the week named after two down. So day of the week named after Thor would be Thursday. You could probably guess that even if you didn't know it. Um, and then, what is this? Oh, our hand, I see, on a clock face, yes. And 56 across to a gambler, unfair advantage, maybe? Unfair advantage. Could this be 1%? I bet small amount is 1%. Yes, because 1% would be low-fat milk, I suppose. 1% to a smartphone user could be a dying battery, 1% battery life remaining. 1% to a gambler could be unfair advantage, because I suppose if you're a professional gambler, a difference in odds of even 1% might be significant. So do we have one more of these? Yes, I think we do. And it's exactly what I thought it was going to be. 56 across to Occupy protesters, um, the 1%. So uh, it would be something like the wealthiest or something. I'm not sure. I, I'll need some crosses for that. But I figured it would have to be, if you're trying to think of different ways to use the phrase 1%, it would sort of be impossible to avoid using using the one dealing with um, sort of uh, inequality in society. Okay. So Olympic event, but I don't know what it is yet, so we'll have to get there. Olympic event featuring a table. Don't know. To not bring up is to not bring up. I keep thinking of things meaning bring up, like rear, for instance, a, a child for it. Um, popular flip phone of the mid 2000s. Maybe this isn't unfair advantage because I think wasn't the Motorola Razor a pop popular flip phone of the mid 2000s, and it would it would fit in that area. Unfair. Let's, let's see if Razor actually works. Reddit Q and A's are AMAs for Ask Me Anythings, I guess. And is in hindsight, I suppose, as was, that's pretty straightforward. So 1% to a gambler is an unfair... I don't know, I'm sorry. State bird of Arizona or South Carolina. Don't, not sure about that either. And a stinger could be a barb. Oh, the a wren must be the state bird of Arizona or South Carolina. There we go. And X or Y in math class, either one of those could be an axis on a Cartesian grid, a um, plotting on an XY graph. Gold standards, gold standards, carrots perhaps? Is this with a C or a K? I can never remember which is which. They're two different things slightly. It must be a K because the eponym of a famed New York City deli is Katz. Katz is deli in New York City. It's a great, great deli if you get a chance to go. Um, that might be a tough cross, I suppose, if, if you, because this carrots, seed, K is confusing. Although perhaps if you got enough of the crosses on cats, you might be able to simply fill in the name um, because it is a name. It's dried stalks can be used to make didgeridoos. Oh, interesting. Um... I'm not sure though. The dial in Don't Touch That Dial. So Don't Touch That Dial, I guess that would be used in old radio shows to indicate don't change the tuning on your radio. So this would be the tuner on a radio. Just sort of um, outdated, but I think that phrase lasted longer than, than maybe that common act would have lasted. I mean, I suppose there are certainly still radios sold with a tuning dial. It's not as though that doesn't doesn't exist anymore. It's just not ubiquitous. Okay, an attractive, fashionable man in modern parlance. I don't know that I know whatever this bit of modern parlance is, actually. I'm not sure. Contents of Lago Titicata, Titicaca, sorry. So this would be water in Spanish, which would be agua. Oh, and it's dried stalks can be used to make didgeridoos. I thought this might be agave, but I didn't, wouldn't have occurred to me that agave would grow in, I would think, Australia, which is where didgeridoos are. I think that's the country with which they're most associated. Anyway, the South African currency is the rand. So what is this? Attractive, fashionable man in modern parlance. 
is it a zaddy? I have, I have no idea what this is. I do not know this phrase, zaddy. Okay, backed up, say, well, that would be saved as in a file on a computer. Weird, zaddy, okay. Well, this might, this cat's might be a tougher cross than I thought, maybe. If you didn't know zaddy, although maybe all of you do, and you were confused about carrots and carrots, the two with C versus K, which I was, this could be tough because this could be all sorts of things, presumably, since it's a, you, you know, it's a, it's a presumably portmanteau, I suppose, anyway. Okay, author of the Fear Street series. I think this is R.L. Stein. That was a, he was a very successful ch sort of children and teens horror author when I was growing up. Jump on the ice would be an axle. So unfair, we hear back to this gambler, unfair rabble. I think I have something wrong here. Yeah, I, I must. What about, what did I do here? Not bring up, maybe omit. Oh, unfavorable, unfavorable odds. Yes, okay. I was thinking of 1% incorrectly, clearly. I mean, this is the more straightforward way to think about it. That 1% would be, if those were your actual odds, in, in other words, 1 to 99 against, that would be, those would be very unfavorable odds. I was thinking of it as a 1% edge, maybe over time is actually quite good. But, uh, Nope, I was thinking of the wrong thing. So unfavorable odds is 1% to a gambler. And Olympic event featuring a table. Ah, it must be the vault. Okay, that this makes a little more sense now. And then a BuzzFeed offering, I suppose, is a quiz. But if BuzzFeed one of the sites that does all those personality quizzes? They must be. Ones who treat people poorly. And oh, and we have, sorry, we have a question mark here, which is a pun indicator. It indicates pun or wordplay of some kind. So... Uh, in this case, I think the pun is around the word treat. Ones who treat people poorly. So they do a, a poor job of treating people. They could be quacks, quack doctors, frauds, swindlers, snake oil salesmen. How many, how many synonyms can I list here? Okay. <clears throat> so we're back to, oh right, we're back to the last, the last meaning of 1%. What is this? Um... Well, the R almost certainly starts the second word because ending with U-L-T, well, not necessarily, I suppose. Put into law would be enact. Is I mean, no, quacks must be correct because that's a Q and that there's going to be, it's almost certainly going to be U after a Q. So what is this? Here we have succeeded in, could be one at, and here we have apple variety. Uh, so Apple Computer, not Apple the Fruit, which is what I first I first started thinking about um, varieties of fruit, Apple, but I think this is iMac, a variety of Apple Computer. And then here we have mishap during a shave. You could nick yourself during a shave. And they consist of reps, could be sets um, when exercising. You have several reps make up a set. And so lookalikes would be twins, which I suppose Max Chen Loring and Benjamin Chen Loring are not because they're in different years of school. Uh, here we have Blank the Clown, classic episode of The Simpsons, Homie the Clown, pretty sure. And so, oh, the ultra-rich, I see. Okay, I was completely incorrect. The LTR, in fact, do uh, about one another in a single word. So the ultra-rich, there we go. And then make a blank of things, make a mess of things. And a bit of a hair decoration. Um... Not sure. Professor Iggins. Ah, so this is from Pygmalion, or the film adaptation, My Fair Lady, or theatrical adaptation, I suppose. Although I think Pygmalion was performed on stage, actually. Sorry. That was the one that was. Okay. Professor Iggins is Henry Higgins from Pygmalion. Henry Higgins, as pronounced by Eliza Doolittle. And then, want a blank, want a bet? The odds are 1%. Um, bit of hair decoration, and then Texter's sign-off could be well, I was going to say it could be TTFN, TTFN, ta, ta for now, but I think it's much more likely to be TTYL, talk to you later. I don't know why I went to the other one first. A rustic verse could be an idyll, and, um, same root as idyllic. Um, it's in the idols of the king, the idols of the king. Boy, another word I, I never say out loud. I only ever read. <laughs> I always feel embarrassed when I, when I um, have to pronounce 
words like that about whose pronunciation I'm not completely certain. Okay, bit of hair decoration. A bend? And then here we have a CBS series with spinoff. It must be CSI, Crime Scene Investigation, I think that stands for. And disdain could be scorn. Title woman in a hit song by Dexy's Midnight Runners. I'm not sure offhand. Frothy beverage, a frappe, I suppose. What exactly is a frappe? Is that, is that a coffee drink or a milk drink or maybe both? Maybe milk and coffee. I'm not sure. Bad in Bolivia. It must be Malo. And becomes more and more irksome. It could be festers. If something is eating at you and really festering and becoming more and more ir irksome. And then here we have sworn words would be an oath. It's pretty straightforward. A plant used by ancient Greeks and Romans to treat wounds. Well, if it's a plant used by anybody, ancient or otherwise, to treat wounds, and it's in a New York Times crossword puzzle, it's probably aloe. So if one is waiting for the light to change, say one might be idle in a car, your car might be idling while you wait for the light to change. And what helium and nitrogen lack, they lack an odor. And ex so this could be exploits, the noun, feats, accomplishments. But in this case, I believe it to be exploits, the verb, uses, to exploit uh, some crossword solving tricks by knowing all the little bits of crossword ease. You're using those tricks. And then here we have debtor's note is an IOU. So there we go. Dedicated work. Ah, another another all-time crossword classic. A dedicated work is an ode. This is this is actually a pretty clever clue for this, and that it's not as straightforward as many clues for ode are. It looks like it could be a verb if you dedicated work, but no, it is a work that is dedicated, a work that has a dedication, an ode. And <clears throat> writing tip is a, uh, so here, this is a, this is a, has a little pun indicator. I don't even know that it really needs one, to be honest, but I suppose maybe on a more difficult day, it wouldn't have one. And it has that because the surface reading of this clue might lead you to think a tip, a hint about writing, but in fact, it's a tip of a pen, a nib. So the, the tip is the bit of wordplay. Although, again, it doesn't really need to be because it is literally true. Um, at least I think so. Actor buddy of the Beverly Hillbillies. Ebsen? So I, here I actually don't know. Now it's making me doubt my other fills. But this looks like dispensary. Um, pharmacist's workplace in a hospital. Yes, dispensary. And then, oh, a bit of fair decoration is a bead. Sorry, I don't know why I wasn't seeing that. And then title woman in a hit song by Dexy's Midnight Runners. Oh, Eileen. Is this come on Eileen, maybe? And then that would make actor buddy of the Beverly Hillbillies, Buddy Ebsen. Could this be right? Yes, it is. Great. Okay, so that was the Wednesday puzzle. That was a fun theme. It was interesting in that it was sort of possible to discern what was going on with the answers, at least with some of the answers, um, before knowing what the central theme answer is. So because the, the central answer was clued as a small amount, we knew that these all were relating to a small amount of something, something meaning something small. So a dairy farmer, I think I had low F and I thought, well, low fat milk for dairy farmer, that makes sense. And dying battery, that's something small. I think I had something, I think I didn't get the gambler one and until I got 1% and it was incorrect. And then what's sort of fun, I think, and, and cleverly constructed about this in particular is that the it's not until the fourth theme clue that we get to the one that deals with the usage of 1% that has become very common, very, very commonly used in modern language, which is the 1% referring to the ultra rich. So if that were early on, it might be have been more of a tell. It's sort of fun that we that we built up to the one that is in some ways the, the most obvious, although it, it wasn't necessarily the most obvious to fill in because there would be a number of ways to refer to that sense of the meaning 1%. And this one happened to be the ultra-rich, but there are other ways we could have expressed that. And so it wasn't necessarily a, a gimme answer. 
anyway, I really liked how this theme was constructed. It sort of it sort of crept up on me, but it was giving it was parceling out little hints throughout, um, allowing us to sort of unlock its secrets over time. There were some tough crosses, I think, in this puzzle, arguably. So let me know how you fared with them. This this little uh, sort of hangman pattern over here of carrots, cats, and zaddy. I do not know what zaddy is. I'll have to look that up. Um, I just can't imagine what the Z indicates. I'm sure it'll be obvious when I see it, I suppose, but I don't have a clue at the moment. Anyway, that little area, I think, could be a tricky cross if you're missing maybe two out of three of those pieces of knowledge. Um, cats I had, and carrots, I just needed to figure out that one letter, so that, that ended up filling out Zaddy for me effectively. Um, I suppose Una and RAF could be tough in the sense that, again, one is a proper noun and one is an acronym, so, uh, or an initialism, so it could be tough if you didn't quite have that locked in. Similarly with Thor and Aura, but I think those are both a little easier to to grasp out of the out of the ether. Anyway, do let me know how you fared with this puzzle. I really enjoyed the theme. I hope you did as well. And um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you enjoyed the series as a as an ongoing thing. If you do, please do subscribe to the channel so that it's easy for you to see when these videos go up each morning. And if you know someone who might also like this sort of thing, please do pass it along. That's really the only the only avenue I have for spreading the word about this thing. So to the extent that you could help me out with that, it would be enormously appreciated. Another thing that is, of course, enormously appreciated is uh, people's contributions to the Patreon campaign, which I mentioned at the outset of the video. That is how you can directly contribute to this channel, to this series, to um, make it an ongoing, sustainable bit of work for me each day. And for starting at only three pounds a month or the equivalent in your local currency, whatever that is, um, you can get bonus video solves on an ongoing basis up on the channel. Uh, there is already this month um, one of the uh, Boss Words Fall Themeless Challenge puzzles, which are clued to be more difficult than a New York Times Saturday puzzle. I did better this this <laughs> most recent one than I did the previous two, so I was I was pleased at least to improve my performance. I haven't yet solved the one this week, but I will. I suppose it must be out now, so I'll I'll, um, I'll get on that soon. And there's also been a week of mini puzzle speed solves. Also, the New York Times has, because it's a new month, has released its new monthly puzzle. So I will need to solve that. I don't know what the theme is yet. I haven't taken a look, but that will be another thing that will go up on the Patreon channel. So anyway, that's all there, as well as enhanced access to the Discord chat server, which is free for anyone to join generally, and the link is in the description underneath each video. And um, also, if you contribute at a certain level, you can receive an exclusive mug, which some people have started to receive already, which is very exciting. I've not yet gotten mine. Uh, I'll need another few weeks for that. And also, recognition at the end of these videos. And on that note, today, I would like to thank Joseph Schwalbach, as well as the inestimable Hood Monster and the incomparable Shantanu Bhatia. So thank you, Joseph. Thank you, Hood Monster. And thank you, Shantanu, for your ongoing and generous support keeping this whole channel running. I very much appreciate it. If you'd like to join your, their ranks, you can do so at patreon.com slash daily solve. And that's that. I hope you will join me for tomorrow's Thursday puzzle. Could be a wacky one. There could be some sort of intricate or complex theme. We'll have to see. Could be a rebus. <laughs> Very uh, a polarizing inclusion in any crossword I know for the audience, but could be there. You'll, you'll have to find out by coming back and watching it. Anyway, until that point, please do have an excellent remainder of your Wednesday. Take care.